In the last video, we saw how to write PWM code to set the angle of our servo to 0, 90, or 180 degrees. But when we ran our code, we saw that the angle positions were not very accurate. In this video, we're going to see how to improve the accuracy of the positioning of our servo. The first thing we're going to do is to simplify our process of setting the servo angle. Instead of writing a different number of ticks to the compare value in order to set an angle, let's see if we can write a general equation where we can put in an angle that we would like the servo to go to and calculate the equivalent number of ticks. In order to do this, let's start by drawing a plot. On the x-axis, we will write angle. The angle will be our input. We want to be able to put in any angle between 0 and 180 degrees and calculate the equivalent number of ticks. On the y-axis, I'm going to write number of ticks so that this will be our output. Now, I'm going to write two points on this plot that we know. First, we know that the zero degree angle corresponds to 2,250 ticks of the timer. We calculated that a couple of videos ago. Secondly, we figured out that the angle of 180 degrees corresponds to the number 6,750 ticks. So I'll draw that point up here. These two points define a line, and this line defines a conversion between angle in degrees and number of ticks. I'll show you how that works. Let's see if we can write the equation of this line. We can do that by using something called the two-point form of a line. Here's what the two-point form looks like. In this equation, x stands for the variable that is represented by our x-axis. In our case, the x-axis is the angle of the servo in degrees. So I'm going to write in that variable for x. y stands for the variable represented by our y-axis. Here, that is the compare value in ticks. All of the remaining variables, x1, x2, y1, and y2, refer to the two points that we know on this line. Now, I'm going to plug in those numbers into this equation, and I'm going to solve the equation for y, which we have used to represent the compare value in ticks. Now, we have an equation where I can plug in the angle in degrees that I want my servo to go to and calculate the number of ticks. These two points on the line are not exact. We want to find the exact number of ticks that corresponds to zero degrees and the exact number of ticks that corresponds to 180 degrees. Here's how we can do that. First, we're going to set up our servo so that it is fixed to the table and can't move. Now, I'm going to rotate the link all the way to its farthest position clockwise. This is the zero degree position. I'm going to use a marker to draw a line right down the center of the link in this position. Now I'm going to rotate the link all the way to the 180 degree position. Rotate the link all the way as far as it will go in the counterclockwise direction. Again, I'm going to use my marker to draw a line right down the center of the link. 
Now, you will notice that these two lines are not actually 180 degrees apart from each other. They're a little bit more than 180 degrees apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one straight line right through the point where these two lines intersect. And I'm going to try and make an equal distance between both of these lines on either side. Now I'm going to put my servo back in place. I want to get my numbers of ticks tuned so that the zero degree angle position lines up with this part of the line and so that the 180 degree position lines up with this line. Let's go back and take a look at our code. I'm going to change the code a little bit so that it doesn't stop at the 90 degree position. I only want the code to send the servo to the zero degree position and the 180 degree position. I'm also going to increase the pause slightly in between these two stops. Let's make it five seconds. Our new code will send the servo to the zero degree position, wait for five seconds, then send the servo to the 180 degree position, and then wait five more seconds. Let's build this code and then program the PSOC. Now, I want to adjust the number of ticks that I'm using for the 0 and 180 degree positions in order to get the link to line up exactly with these two desired 0 and 180 degree lines. You can see that the 0 degree position is not nearly small enough to reach the line that I've labeled as 0 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number of ticks that is supposed to correspond to zero degrees and I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to start by decreasing it by 100. Then I'm going to go ahead and program the PSOC. I'm not going to go through the build process first here because when you program the PSOC, it automatically builds. Since all I changed was a number and not any of my actual code, it's unlikely that I have any errors. So I'm going to go ahead and directly program the PSOC. Now let's take a look at what the effect was on how the servo moved. It got a little bit closer to zero, but not nearly close enough. I'm going to now decrease this number by more. Let's try 1,900. That's much closer, but it's still not quite close enough. I'm going to decrease the number again.
It's still not quite close enough. Let's decrease the number again. Zero is now pretty good, but 180 is a, going a little bit too far. So let's decrease this number a little bit as well. The numbers are still not exact, but they're much better than they were before. For our purposes, this is sufficient. We're going to stop here and remember these two numbers. 1500 for the 0 degrees and 6650 for the 180 degree position. Now let's look back at our plot of our line. We now know that the number of ticks that corresponds to 0 degrees is 1500 and the number of ticks that corresponds to 180 degrees is 6,650. Let's plug those numbers into our equation. x1 will be 0 and x2 will be 180. y1 will be 1500, the number of ticks that corresponds to 0 and y2 will be 6650, the number of ticks that corresponds to 180 degrees. We now have an equation that allows us to convert any number of angles in degrees into a number of ticks. Let's go back to the code and I'll show you how you can use this new information to set the angle of your servo to anything you want. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare a couple of variables. In order to declare a variable in C code, we have to start by saying what kind of a variable it is. For our angle, we're going to make it be a float. A float is a kind of a variable that has a decimal point in it. This is as opposed to an integer type of variable which would not have a decimal. Let's call this variable angle. Then let's declare another variable that is a number of ticks. The number of ticks should not be a float because we cannot have a number of ticks that is a half a tick or a fourth of a tick. We can only have integer numbers of ticks. So I'm going to declare an integer called ticks. Now I'm going to set a value for angle. Let's suppose I want the angle to be 15 degrees. Inside of the for loop, I'm going to convert the value of angle into a number of ticks. And I'll do that by using the equation. First, we have y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Remember that our y2 value is 6650 and our y1 value is 1500. That's divided by x2 minus x1. Our x2 value is 180 and our x1 value was 0. I'm now going to put this entire thing into parentheses because we want to multiply this by x minus x1. Remember that our x variable is the angle that we set and x1, if you recall, is 0 degrees. Finally, we add the value of y1, which was 1500. Now, when I write the compare value, what I want to write is the value that I just calculated, the number of ticks.
I want to have a delay here also, but for now I'm going to make it much smaller. And let's delete these last two lines because we don't need these anymore. Now when we run this code, it should be that our servo will turn to 15 degrees. Let's try it. This time, let's make sure and build our code first so that we can check for any errors. If you have any errors, solve your errors first before you go on and program the PSOC. Now, when we look back at our servo, we see that it has in fact rotated to an angle of about 15 degrees. We can test our work to make sure we've done this correctly by changing the value of angle and programming the PSOC again. Let's try and send the servo to exactly 90 degrees. So we change the angle to 90 and then program. We see that our servo does in fact rotate to the 90 degree position. So far everything looks good. Let's just try one more value to see if everything's working correctly. Let's change the angle to 120 degrees. The servo rotates to the 120 degree position, so everything looks good. The ability to set the angles of our servos is a very useful skill that we'll be using through the rest of the process of building our robot.